Welcome to Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker, back again with another episode with Michael. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about, we're going to recap on an episode that we did before about how good kids go bad. What we're going to be talking about here is some things that you can do uh, that we think that you should be able to do or can do to help your child not go in that direction and end up in here like us, right? So, Michael, go ahead, man, and uh, introduce yourself again to the people, man. Let them know. You know what I'm saying? What you got to say, and let's get to it, man. It's Michael back again. Uh, I really enjoy our conversations that we have on here, and uh, I, I try to do them all the time, every time we get a chance. Dig that, dig and, that. And the conversation we were having about good kids going bad, mm-hmm. well, I mean, are kids really bad? But how can we redirect their behavior? Yeah. Yeah, that's about redirecting their behavior. Redirect so behavior. what? What is? give me something off the top of your head, or have you, uh, have you given that some thought? Uh, about how we could uh, redirect our children and keep them from going, you know, following in our footsteps, so to speak? For me, for me, it would have been sports. You know, uh, I love playing sports, and I know young people love playing sports. So if we had more people that were out there trying to, to, to help these kids to, to get into sports, get active. Uh, you know, growing up, moms, you got to get out of this house. Yeah. So we had to get out, and we did things. So... And it brings me back to this, this situation with my brother-in-law when mm-hmm. he gets persecuted for mm-hmm. something that he's supposed to do. Give people did. a little background on what, what you're talking about as far as what, what he did. He was he was working with kids working in a program? Kids, working with kids in the program. Had mm-hmm. a program, baseball program, and had was keeping the inner city kids off the streets. Okay. And some politics got involved. And yeah. And he, you know, they did a little thing on the, on the news about it mm-hmm. and persecuted him. And, and I was telling him one time that when... When the woman asked this question, you should have told her, "What I would, do you want these kids out here carjacking you, or do you want them out here playing baseball with me?" Right. So right. Right. Instead of instead of trying to to persecute him for something that wasn't there, why not put this on the news and say this is a this is a great man that's trying to help these kids get off the street. And we should be doing more of that. More of it. More right. of it. But instead, they want the opposite. Of it. They want the opposite. They shut him down. Shut him down. Had the whole thing messed up. Took it all out and, and, and blew it out of proportion from something that it actually was, was not. Yeah, I wonder what happened to those kids and all this and that, right? That's what I'm like. So you say sports. Why sports? What is it that sports uh, does for kids? You know, the structure. Describe that. Why you think that sports is something that ki- more kids should get involved in? And more people should get involved in trying to help them get involved in It's that. more It's the structure of it. The structure of sports, you know, the, the family environment, uh, uh, the things that the physical activity to keep you wear the kids down, you know what I mean? The so that they won't have all this energy. My eighth grade eighth grade football coach caught me one time and I was getting ready to get into a fight with this guy. And he he comes pulls me aside, he's what is wrong with you? I said, Well he he did this or that. He said, Why don't I see that aggression out of you on the football field? And from that day forward, I, I, I took my aggression out on the football mm-hmm, field, mm-hmm. And, I, and I loved it. Yeah. So we need more people like this coach who mm-hmm. approached me mm-hmm. to do this. Mm-hmm. Because after him, I had no more. There was no more coaches. There were no more coaches that did that. Right. Okay, but I have to ask the question, if that worked for you, then why? You learned the principle of taking your aggression out when you're playing sports, right? Exactly. So how does that translate to when you're out and about, you know, with your friends and all this and that? So how does that lesson that you learned translate? How does it, you know, don't you think somebody needs to, it needs to be some kind of way where kids can connect, okay, I'm not on the basketball court, I'm not on the football uh, field, so, but I am out here in public and I'm associating with friends, so now I'm getting all of this aggression built up, now what do I do with it? You know what I mean? So, and and, and I'm asking you that because I want to know how did you take that lesson that that coach taught you and use it in your daily life? I evidently didn't use it in my daily life because I'm here. Well, oh, okay, okay, I, I I give you that, but let me say it like this then. I don't think that people expect perfection, right? You mm-hmm. learn a lesson, you apply it when you're conscious and aware, uh, but most of the time, man, things happen, and we're not really thinking about the lessons that moms or coach or or pops, whoever it is taught us this is what you do in this situation. Sometimes things move so fast that we're not even really thinking about it. We know better, but a lot of times we don't do better. So were there ever times when you were out and about in the community where you thought about what your coach said or what your mom said and you applied it? 
don't really I don't really think I did. You don't? I don't because maybe maybe in the eighth grade, but when I got to high school, things things were just different. You're around a lot more people, and you got a lot more influences, and peer pressure is terrible. Yeah. So, and and I had a conversation with my oldest niece when she was in high school. She she was doing something. She got in trouble. Mm-hmm. And I asked her, why, why why can't you learn from my mistakes? You see that I'm, I've been in prison your whole life. Right. And uh, I said, what is it? Do you think that we were just born 30 years old? She's like, yeah. So I was like, so you don't think that we had these same uh, feelings or problems yeah. and things that we went through yeah. when we were younger? We yeah. had to go through that. Yeah. Well, I saw something on TV, man, that uh, it helped me to understand a little bit better. It was the study of the brain, right? And they were talking about, you know, when we hit puberty or 11 or 12 years old, right? Something happens in our brain where we are seeking out status. We're trying to carve out that place for ourselves, right? And we want to be accepted by our peers. And that's when we're really open to all of the other things that's going on. So we can be influenced very easily at that point, right? Because we want to be, we want to be accepted, you know? And I think that plays a lot into, into how kids at that age end up going the wrong way. They, they have all of these wrong, bad influences in front of them, you know, and that's what they see and they gravitate toward it because they're getting accepted more so by the individuals that are leading them astray versus the individuals that could lead them down a positive path. It seems like, it's almost like making an NBA team. You got all of these colleges, all these Division One, Division Two players that are great players, but only a handful of players can make it into the NBA, right? Yeah. So you got all of these kids out here that want to do right, have the potential to do great things, but you only have a small amount of people that are really focused on, not to take anything away from parents, man. Now look, I love parents. I think that they do a great job. But there's something wrong when the most attention is paid to a child when they are getting in trouble versus when they're doing good. You know what I mean? I did an episode with my nephew about that not too long ago, me and my son. And that's what he told us. He remembers, you know, people getting on him when he's doing bad, but not the congratulations and that boys when he's doing good. You know what I mean? Yeah. And more people need to be involved in that and, and be, you know, like mentors, whether, you know, it's your child or not. When you see a child that uh, is doing well or, or, or just, you know, doing what they should be doing, tell them that. Lift them up. Pat them on the back. Tell them that they're doing a great job and keep it up and you're proud of them. Whether you know that child or not, let them know when you recognize something that they are doing good. Let them know that. That positive reinforcement can go a long way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and we, as society, need to get away from the fact that when children commit crimes that they should be charged as an adult because of the severity of their crime. And they're just throwaways. These kids aren't throwaways. They need direction. They need somebody in their life to direct them. Because we don't, we don't listen to our parents all the time. We listen to either our peers or somebody that we may respect in the community. So it comes up to, to us as community leaders to try to help these parents. It takes a, a village to raise a child. Mm-hmm. And that's absolutely true. And so Okay, but let, let me, I'm, I'm going to take the other side on that real quick, just for the conversation, right? Because I agree with you in, in, in principle on what, about what you said. But what do you say to those people in the community when this child commits an adult crime and they are afraid? You get a child that comes through and uh, you got somebody that's trying to get in their house at night and a child comes up behind them, you know, a teenager with a gun and puts it to the back of their head and then they get caught and then they get charged as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, a juvenile and then they get sent home to their mother and then they're right back out the next night doing the same thing. Where in the system do you get that child's attention as opposed to sending them to an adult facility for that. What do you do? We need to have more. We need to have more facilities for them for their rehabilitation. For uh, like Steve Harvey has the, the the summer camp that he takes the kids out into the into the wilderness into the camps. You know, this is the things that that these kids need to go through. They need to experience life. You so know? you're saying that the so you're saying that the the facilities that they have now are not up to the task. They're just locking them in a cage. What is that gonna do? You you lock you lock a wild animal in a cage and then you let him out. He's gonna be real vicious. So yeah. that's the same thing with these children. You put these kids in these cages, they're coming out vicious. They're coming out more and more vicious. So I'm 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 understanding you uh, what you're saying, right? I, I think that 
I think you're on to something. I think that the citizens out there need to be paying more attention to what these um, the professionals at these facilities are doing as opposed to what they're saying. Yeah, because, because go ahead. Because one of the one of the politicians has said that uh, prison reform doesn't start in prison; it starts before the person gets to prison. I agree. Mm -hmm. So we, we need to fund. Let's stop funneling all, all this money into these prisons. Let's funnel funnel some money into uh, programs for these inner city youths, for these ones that, that think that violence is the key. Let's fund some stuff for that. Let's get yeah, them, and get and, and, and 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 more, and yeah, they can do a lot for that. But you can also help a problem like that if you increase help increase wages for for these parents that are making these meager incomes and they got to have two jobs. And that time, that time that they're working these two jobs, they're away from the child. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a whole lot of things that they could do that really uh, would change that. I just think that uh, when things like that happen, when when kids commit adult crimes, it scares everybody. You know, don't nobody's thinking about how old was this person. You know what I'm saying? That committed the crime. They're, what they're thinking about is you shot somebody, or you killed somebody, or you robbed somebody. They're not thinking about oh, he was a child. He must have gone through some traumatic stuff. Or what they want is that individual stopped, no matter what the age. But the people that are in charge of that aspect of the treatment or the punishment, they continue, in my opinion, it's good people. Don't get me wrong. I think it's some good people that work in these places, right? And they can only do what they are allowed to do. Yes. The system is not responding to the needs of the people in, in, in reality. It's like... They say that they are, but they're not. They got everything, you read it, you read over the curriculum and what it's supposed to do, but they're not doing that kind of stuff, man. They're just talking about it, you know what I'm saying? They're just talking about it. And don't get me wrong, uh, there are some that probably do need to remain locked up, but that doesn't mean that it's like a blanket thing, that you just lock them all up. Because it has to be case by case. It has to be case by case, and it has to be caseworkers that care about the kids to try to see if they can get these kids to, to redirect their behavior. Yeah. So, okay, now you, you talked about sports. Is there anything else that you would like to recommend to uh, parents or community leaders that they should be doing, in your opinion, to help, you know, keep good kids from going back? I'm stuck on us. When we get out of here, we need to do mentors. We need to, we need to be mentors. We need to do things with these kids. We, we shouldn't be shunned out of society for the crime that we committed 20, 30 years ago. Let us let us do what we can to try to stop the violence. Let us do what we can to mentor these kids to try to stop it. Because we know that we're, we're not going to save everybody. Yeah. My goal is to save one. If I can save one, that one person, that one person doesn't get a victim. Right. And if you save one, that person doesn't right. have a victim. So right. we can all do our, we can all do our part. Right. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think a lot of people, man, after they go through what we've been through, they just want to move on with their lives and they don't want to look back. But I think that's it being irresponsible because at the end of the day, you don't get to walk away from the trouble and the pain and the destruction that you caused in the neighborhood because you've changed your life. You got to give back. You got to go back and try to make things right in that community. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got to do the best you can and you shouldn't be able to just go on with your life because you changed your life. You need to go back and, 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 and make amends. Well, you got anything else you want to say before I wrap this up? Just that our choices in life are our choices for life. Man, dig that. Enough said. This has been another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker, the crime critic. Peace, y'all.